Hi, welcome to my channel. Uh, I guess I'm a YouTuber now. I'm, I'm not sure how long you have to have a YouTube channel to be a YouTuber, <laughs> but uh, I've been doing this pretty steadily now for well over a year, and I plan on doing it for years to come, uh, as long as I continue to have a pulse. <laughs> so, um, this video is going to be a little different than most of my other videos. I'm going to interview myself. Just so you'll get a chance to get to know me a little better. And this video will give me the opportunity to give a few shout outs to a few people who uh, have impacted my life in the past. I'm sitting down with me today. Yes, that's right, I'm interviewing me. I'm going to be asking all the really tough questions, and who better else to interview me than me? So, without any further ado, <laughs> let me jump right in here. Uh, how you doing today, Mitch? Well, I'm doing really great. Well, am I, do I look into you, or do I look at the camera? You know, that's entirely up to you. You can look at the camera, you can look at me. We just have some important questions to ask. Well, okay. How about if I look at both? Look, I, I just, I just want to say uh, thank you for having me today. I've been really looking forward to this. And uh, I'm here to answer any questions you might have to ask. So shoot away. Well, great, Mitch. I think we're going to get along perfectly. Um, so, I, I know you've been through um, physical and emotional struggles over the last several years. Let's not beat a dead horse. We've seen your past videos on this. Um, what I really want to know is what has led you to this new big plan of yours of becoming a nomad? Well, I have to be honest. It was some of the videos I've been watching on YouTube that's kind of what got me going. And thinking back now... And there were so many videos, but it started with a channel called Headwaters Kayak, right at the beginning of COVID. Uh, to live in my manufactured housing community, also referred to as a trailer park, we were not allowed to keep RVs and boats in the community, so I sold my 22-foot Cuddy Cruiser that I've had for over 20 years. That must have been difficult for you. Yeah, it was. Uh... I spent nearly all of my free time on that boat in the warmer months <laughs> during our very short summers. But storing it in the winter here was a challenge because I used to keep it at home, right in my driveway, but now I had to pay for storage. And with it being off-site, I worried about critters getting into it and Lord knows what else. And after the second year here, I decided to let it go while it still had some value. I kept it in ship shape. You could say. <laughs> yeah, I see what you did there. Uh, ship shape. That's funny. Yeah. Anyway, I, uh, I adjusted. I found other things to do, like gardening around the place here. And uh, after a few years had passed, I, I was getting the itch to get back on the water. So, so what did you, did you go see a doctor? I, I hear they have a cream for that. Oh, you are funny. No, I... Decided to dig out all my old camping gear and get back into it. I had a small pup tent and a, a lot of other stuff like a sterno stove and an old sleeping bag and a twin size blow up mattress. And uh, it was a nightmare, to be honest. Uh, it was many years since I had been camping and I quickly discovered that sleeping on the ground wasn't for me. So uh, that was when I really got into camping. When I got home, from that trip, <laughs> I threw the tent right in the garbage can, and I went shopping for a pop-up camper. So tell me, Mitch, uh, where does Headwaters Kayak Channel come into play here? I'm getting to it. Okay, sorry. Please continue. 
Okay, so there I was in my new pop-up camper, new used pop-up camper, and a little rustic uh, state campground called Maple Bay on uh, Burt Lake in northern Michigan. And the first night started off wonderful, but after I got camp set up and started a fire and cooked a little surf and turf over the open fire, I thought I was living the dream, man, but I was camping in view of the boat launch and uh, there were a few guys in their bass boats heading out for an evening of fishing. Not to mention there were pleasure boats that were anchored just offshore and there I was, stuck on land. I, I just had to get back out of the water. Now I was only there for a couple of nights and for the rest of the season I camped a few more times, but I couldn't get the idea of getting back out of the water out of my head. I stored the camper in a friend's garage, and come springtime, I sold it, started shopping for a kayak. Not one of those little sit-inside kayaks. I wanted one that I could pedal, or better yet, even motorize. Motorized? Really? Dude, it's, it's me you're talking to. You, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, motorized. Why are you acting surprised? For the most part, I was new to the sport. I'd never even been in a kayak before. But research is my middle name. No, it's not. Uh, you don't have a middle name. Stop. So anyway, I started checking out YouTube channels, and Headwater Kayak was one of the first ones I stumbled upon. A guy named Dan Arbuckle uh, headed that channel up, and he does demos of all kinds of different kinds of kayaks. And another channel uh, is called Kayak USA, and that's some guy down south, and he kind of talks like this. He's got a real cool channel, and he does all kinds of kayak modifications. Really nice guy. And then I, I found the holy grail of all modifications uh, on a channel, uh, I think it's just called Zoffinger. Uh, Marty Zoffinger is his name. He's down in Florida. And I spent the rest of the winter and the beginning of COVID doing my due diligence before I actually pulled the trigger on my Jackson Bite FD kayak. Bite FD. What's that stand for? Uh, well, Flex Drive FD stands for Flex Drive. Uh, it gave me the best of both worlds. It's a pedal drive, but when you don't want to pedal, you take the pedal drive out and you put a motor into the same hole that the <laughs> pedal drive went into. It's just very module-like. So here's a question that everybody might want to know uh, the answer to. Why did you sell the camper? <sighs> Good question. Um, the kayak was too big and too heavy to load on top of my car, which I learned after the first season of owning it. So with the proceeds from the sale of the camper, I paid for the kayak and bought a really nice heavy duty canvas tent from a website called Competitive Edge. Uh, this tent is easier to set up than the pop-up camper is and, and the guys over at Competitive Edge, uh, I think it's competitiveedge.com uh, they have awesome, incredible customer service, and if you're in the market for a tent or just about anything outdoors, check out their website. Uh, Charlie Hansen is the guy I talked to, and you can get a hold of him uh, by calling 866-308-5484, and that's extension 30. That's 866. <laughs> Should I talk to the camera? 308-5484, extension 30, and, and uh, that, I think that's Charlie's extension. So uh, tell him Mitch sent you. you this one. <laughs> then I bought an old Wave Runner trailer and rebuilt it from the ground up and made a custom kayak trailer out of it. So uh, how does becoming a full-time nomad play into this whole scenario? Well, uh, during my discovery stage, I found several YouTube channels on van life and full-time RV life. I guess my friend uh, Evan Riesenbeck, hey Evan, um, kind of turned me on to the whole lifestyle. He's got a YouTube channel called Metal Tent Diaries. You've got to check that one out. Pretty cool. 
Um, he and his lovely bride built out a big van and hit the road for an extended trip and filmed their whole adventure. It's really cool. I guess that's what really put the seed in my head. But there are tons of channels out there like Why Not Wander? A big shout out to Matt and Laurie. Hey Matt and Laurie. Um, and uh, the Steve Wallace channel, also known as Camping with Steve. He's a Canadian. He's up there in the Great Lake North there. And uh, uh, there's a, another channel called Cheap RV Living with Bob Wells. He's famous now. He's been in the movie Nomad. Um, and we can't forget about my fellow Michiganders, Trekkers. That's their channel, Trekkers, T-R-E-K-E-R-S, T-R-E-K-E-R-S, just one K. Um, and that's Jesse and Ari Adler. And uh, they're from Michigan, and they do, uh, they actually have a series of like over a hundred campgrounds that they visited and critiqued just in Michigan alone, but they're going all over the country now, so check out their website. It's pretty cool. I have a little crush on Jessie. She's a cutie pie. Uh, but uh, another channel I look on from time to time is uh, a lady, uh, I, I don't remember her name, sue me. <laughs> but it's called Seeking a Better World View. And uh, her channel shows how adversity can turn your life upside down and how she's chosen to deal with life on her own terms. So is this something that you really want to do? Sell off all your stuff? Hit the road? How will you survive? How will you pay for gas? How are you going to eat? Where will you go? <laughs> I bet you get asked that question a lot, or those questions. Um, campgrounds can get pretty expensive. Seems like it would be cheaper to stay where you're at. This isn't just a spur-of-the-moment decision. I've been considering all of those questions for the last few years, and they're good questions. The short answer is, I don't know. Let me address the selling off all my stuff question. We accumulate a lot of stuff over our lifetime. The truth of the matter is, we have a home to house all the stuff that we have that we don't use anymore. That's why we have garage sales and yard sales. Every so often, we have to purge some of that crap. <laughs> but think about how much stuff you hold on to. Stuff you still have. What are you going to do with it? It's just stuff. Uh, grandma's dinnerware has sentimental value. You don't use it. What are you going to do with it? Pull it out, dust it off, show it off, put it away? Uh, it's just stuff. And those paintings on the wall, and those 13 winter jackets you have, and the 30 pair of shoes, oh my lord, don't get me started. Look, I have underwear that's older than my grown kids. I'm not selling off all of my stuff, just most of it. <laughs> and the old underwear I'm going to just throw away. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm, I don't need most of this stuff anymore. You know, my brother has so much crap, he's built an entire barn to store it all. And when he decides he needs something from the barn, he usually can't find it. So what does he do? He goes out and buys it again. More crap. <laughs> I can't live like that anymore. So what about gas and food and so on? Well, let me take a step back for a minute. I've been managing a vacation rental property for the last 10 years. The owner and I have had a wonderful working relationship. I hardly ever see them, and they keep sending me money. <laughs> I wish my marriage worked that way, but it didn't. <laughs> but seriously, after 10 years of working for them, they're finally going to move into their property at the end of July, and I have a feeling they're going to Stop giving me money, so... With that in mind, I will be of the esteemed age of Social Security age, and uh, so that'll help out. Um, I have a little bit of money to fall back on. Uh, my mom is getting up there in age, and uh, I thought perhaps I'll pack up all my stuff and uh, go chill out with her for a while, uh, because it won't be long before she's going to need a lot more help, so... That's, that's where I come in. I'm, I'm packing up everything and I'm, I'm going to shoot down there and, and chill, chill with, with Mama for a while. We love our mamas, right? Right? <laughs> we do. Um, this will give me a little more time to get my nomadic act together. Uh, when the time comes, 
Mom will go her way, and, and I'll go mine, and if you get the picture. Uh, and we have a nice place under the porch uh, is laid out, especially for her. We're just going to get the shovel out. And... So you finally hit the road, what then? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Well, wherever I want, I guess. Uh, imagine that, having the freedom to go and do whatever it is you want to do. I have a hard time with the full-time term. Um, nothing is full-time. Everything is finite. Um, everything has a beginning, middle, and end. What I won't be anymore is a house owner. I'll still have a home, hopefully a home that I can pull behind my vehicle. I want to visit places. I want to stay uh, with some family and friends. Maybe do some driveway camping in Pennsylvania at my brother's house. Uh, or my sister, at, brother and sister-in-law's house. <laughs> we don't want to forget Diana. She's really the brains of the... Um... Anyway, well, <laughs> she... We don't want to... We don't want to trash talk my brother Rick, but... Brother Rick! <laughs> Diana's the boss, just in case you didn't know. So, uh, and then I have a friend down in um, Georgia. Uh, and, and, you know, that's what friends are for, you know. It's... it's uh... <gasps> That's what friends are for. Oh, I know. Stick to my day job. So, yeah, Mikey lives down in Hinesville, Georgia. Mikey! Um, uh, and I've never been out west. I'd love to go camp in the desert for a month or so in the winter. Um, I have lots of crazy harebrained ideas. I want to go fishing in the mangroves for snook and drink a Bud Light with Marty Zoffinger down there in Florida, if he'd have me. But for now, I'm focused on today. Life has a way of doing whatever it wants to do. And uh, my, one of my favorite sayings is, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. I think that's a quote from John Lennon. Peace, man. So for now, it's a day at a time. There are a few people I'll miss around here, one of which I've grown particularly fond of. And when that day comes, it's, it's going to be a rough one. And that's all I've got to say about that. Oh, nice. So, so that's what friends are for, mooching off of. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, before I wrap this up, what have you got planned for the near future? <laughs> well, I was going to say mooching is my middle name, but we've already established that I don't have a middle name. <laughs> so, uh, uh, like I said, uh, at this time, a day at a time. Near future, I have to mow the lawn at the rental property this week. I've got renters checking in. Hopefully it'll quit raining soon. Uh, this weekend I'll be going on what may be my final camping trip as a northern Michigan resident with said particularly fond friend. And uh, I'll try to shoot some video. And she doesn't like being on video. Any kind of video. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> so... Well, thank you, Mitch, for taking the time to talk with me today. Uh, I really appreciate it. I know you're very busy. Well, you, you're welcome, Mitch. Um, I'm never too busy to sit down and talk to myself. And uh, I guess that wraps it up for now. Um, let me talk to you guys. I'm done with him. Um, please, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Don't hit the thumbs down button. That would, don't do that. And uh, leave a comment. Love to hear from you. And thanks for stopping in to the Dr. Kayak channel. Yes, there is a doctor in the house.